I would like to now introduce Mayor Joseph Curtitone. Tonight is an historic night for Mayor Curtitone. Curtitone, Curtitone. He is beginning his sixth term as mayor of the city of Somerville, making him the longest serving mayor in the city's history. Prior to his election as mayor in November 2003, Mayor Curtitone served eight years as an alderman at large. In his 10 years as mayor, he has implemented many innovative programs and policies, like Shape Up Somerville, 311, and Somerset, among many, many others, which have led to Somerville's being named to a long list of prestigious organizations, awards, and recognitions across the country. He and his wife, Nancy, are, are parents to four young sons, Cosmo, Joseph, Patrick, and James, all of whom are here this evening. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. <coughs> Excuse me. I, Joseph A. Curtatoni. I, Joseph A. Curtatoni. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And will support the Constitution thereof, so help me God. And will support the Constitution thereof, so help me God. I, Joseph A. Curtatoni. I, Joseph A. Curtatoni. Do solemnly swear and affirm. Do solemnly swear and affirm. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me. Discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me. As mayor of the city of Somerville. As mayor of the city of Somerville. According to the best of my abilities and understanding. According to the best of my abilities and understanding. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of the Constitution and the laws of the Commonwealth. Of the Constitution and the laws of the Commonwealth. So help me God. So help me God. I, Joseph A. Curtitone. I, Joseph A. Curtitone. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. Mayor. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Flynn, my good friend. And I want to give Judge Flynn a, a great round of applause. <laughs> Justice of the Summer District Court. Well, good evening and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Members of the state delegation, President White, Vice President Connolly, Chairperson Rafal, and Vice Chairperson Sweeting, honorable members of the Board of Aldermen and School Committee, Superintendent Parentazzi, my good friend, former Mayor Bruin and Mayor Kelly Gay, honored guests, give them a round of applause, good people. <laughs> honored guests, friends, family, my fellow public servants, and my fellow residents of Somerville. I stand before you this evening in my sixth inaugural as mayor, humbled by the trust you have placed in me and grateful for the opportunity to continue our work of making this city a place of opportunity for everyone. As I uh, look back tonight at what we have accomplished together and what the future holds, I must thank my fellow elected officials who have contributed so much to the work of making Somerville a great place to live, work, play, and raise a family. Thank you very much. <laughs> to those newly elected to office in November, thank you for already displaying your commitment to the values of this community and for standing up to represent those values. I look forward to working with each and every one of you Thank you very much. You. 
And to those elected officials leaving office, Teresa, I'm looking at you, <laughs> and others, and I'm thinking of Tom and many more, I in this city owe you a debt of gratitude for your service. Thank you for your dedication <laughs> and for your contributions to our city. Thank you also to Pauline for serving as our MC tonight. Your artistry and creativity represents so much of what we and I love about Somerville, and if you get over that shyness, you're gonna be a hell of a person, let me tell you. <laughs> Someone once told me, the days are long, but the years are short. And it certainly seems that way over the past decade both as a father watching my family grow, but also as mayor and watching the city grow. When I stood before you 10 years ago, my son Cosmo was only an infant. Now Cosmo has three brothers, Joey, Patrick, and James, somewhat paying attention here tonight. <laughs> my, my sons, my wife Nancy, and my mother Maria and my extended family have given me so much support and understanding over this past decade. In fact, we just got back from a family trip to Lake Placid yesterday. So my wife, four kids and I packed into a car with suitcases and supporting equipment for a five hour drive to a kids hockey tournament. And we faced, as you can imagine, lots of options. What to do, where to eat, what movies to watch, which led to some intense debate and serious negotiations. <laughs> and you know, now that I think of it, my vacation was a lot like my day job. <laughs> we had fun, didn't we boys? Didn't we mom? Yes, and you won, but I'm glad to be home because <laughs> I'm always glad to be back in our city. And as I reflect upon the past decade, I think back to why I wanted to run for mayor in the first place. I love this city. My parents came from Italy and settled here seeking a better life for their family. They came to Somerville because they sought opportunity. They wanted to make their hopes and dreams a reality. In my neighborhood, it was filled with similar stories. Families from Ireland, Greece, and Portugal, we all came together to pursue our dreams. I remember, I remember this, I remember neighbors leaning over their fences to share their prized tomatoes or freshly grown basil. I remember walking down the street in my neighborhood and hearing different languages from all over the world. I remember carrying my hockey gear in a bag down the street with my friends and kids playing ball in the street while parents chatted on their porches, and somewhere, you could hear someone play music. And I, I saw a city filled with hardworking, optimistic, proud, and creative people. I saw the potential in my family, my neighbors, and my friends. I took in our diversity, all the tastes and smells and sounds from neighborhood shops and squares, and I knew that here, here, we had something uniquely ours. I took pride in being from Somerville. I knew that by working together, the potential within all of us, my family, my friends, and my neighbors, could combine to create something bigger, better and brighter. You see, my story, it's your story. It's Somerville's story. And we have all written our own chapters of that story but they're all part of the larger narrative that is Somerville. It's Alex Whitmore's story. Inspired by his first bite of stone ground chocolate in Mexico, he came to Somerville and started his own chocolate factory, Taza Chocolate, lauded in the gourmet world. It's Sylvia de la Soto's story. She immigrated here from Peru, built up her credit while living in Somerville's affordable housing, and used that credit to get a small business loan and in the face of a tough economy, she decided to pursue her dream. Now she's part of some of those thriving restaurants seen as the owner of Agua de Verde. It's Tom Bent's story. Born and raised here, 
when Tom graduated from Somerville High School, earned a vocational degree, and then set up shop in his hometown. Now he's not only the successful owner of Bent Electrical, which offers great jobs in a union shop, he gives his time and passion here in the city and elsewhere. It's Guy Cavalcanti and Jen Martinez's story. Looking to pursue their passions of building robots and creating costumes, but lacking the space to pursue their dreams, Guy and Jen saw the vibrant, creative, and diverse community of Somerville as the perfect home for Artisan's Asylum, a place where they and anybody could pursue their craft in an inspiring and supporting environment. These are just a few of the many individual success stories that together help form the narrative that is some of them. These are stories of creativity, resourcefulness, and dogged persistence. I love being me because I see these stories play out every day. I get to tap into this wonderful marketplace of ideas and rely on the collective depth and wisdom of this great community. They say leadership can be a lonely experience, but my experience as mayor of this great city has taught me that I'm never alone. When I fought for the Green Line, Orange Line, or the Community Path Extension, I wasn't alone. I had Step, Mystic View, the Friends of the Community Path, and scores of others beside me. When I advocated for the Trust Act, Central Presente was on the State House steps with me. When I worked to help pass the Community Preservation Act, my partners were many. The Somerville Community Corporation, Historic Somerville, Groundwork Somerville, Invest in Somerville, and countless community leaders. I mean, I am never alone when it comes to providing a voice for the aspirations and ambitions of this community. I can always count on you. That is why I love this job. Today, our future is bright. Ten years ago, we faced a very different and uncertain future. We were in the midst of a perfect fiscal storm, a limping economy, shrinking state aid, and soaring fixed costs. In my first inaugural address, I asked for your help. I told you that we faced a fundamental choice, a choice that would shape our city's destiny for decades to come. I said we could hunker down, lower our sights, and just scrape by until times change for the better. Or we could build on the tradition of pride and progress that have shaped this city's recent history. And we could act decisively to ensure a more vital and prosperous community for our children and ourselves. Ten years later, you know what? We did it. You did it. In fact, we exceeded our expectations. We not only pulled together to face our challenges squarely, we didn't just commit to bold action. And we have made some of a model city, a city that others look to because we lead the way. Leaders from across the state, the nation, and internationally, from nonprofit directors to mayors and even the first lady have turned to us for insight into addressing everything from childhood obesity to city management to how to measure resident happiness. I mean, we exceeded our expectations because you chose hope and progress. You chose to invest in our collective future, in our schools, in our neighborhoods, and in each other. We decided to control our own destiny, and we did. We worked together to forge another path, building an exceptional place to live, work, play, and raise a family. I mean, this is the orient and value for every decision taken, investment made, and policy created. It charges us to act today with an eye on tomorrow. And that is what we do every day. The community, this community, not only accepted the challenge, this community stood up to create an incredible legacy of accomplishments, 
and prosperity that has launched us into the future. Just look at what we have accomplished together. Our residents are valued customers who deserve the best service. So we introduced one called the City Hall with 311. The first 311 call center in New England, named the best call center in the nation by Rutgers University. The Boston Globe. The Boston Globe has declared Somerville the best run city in Massachusetts. We have received the highest bond rating on our city's history based on our management practices and on our approach to economic development. Safe neighborhoods. Safe neighborhoods are the foundation of a thriving city. So we reformed the Somerville Police Department into an effective and efficient model of community based policing with a diversified workforce and real results. Crime is down and down significantly. For years, for years, some of those infrastructure was ignored and when we asked for help, the state shut the door. Promises were broken on the Green Line extension. The state told us that they would never, never build the Orange Line stop in Assembly Square. But you knocked that door down with your passion, advocacy, and commitment to our values. You opened the door to the Green Line extension. It's a reality today. The Green Line extension is under construction. <laughs> you opened the door to Assembly Square Orange Line Station that will be fully operational this summer. You fought to bring down McGrath Highway, and it's coming down. <laughs> you demanded a city without the blight of a waste transfer station on the skyline. And you never let go of that vision for a mixed use, environmentally sensitive new neighborhood that would bring jobs, housing, and expanded access to the Mystic River. Because of you, that neighborhood is rising from the shores of the Mystic today at Assembly Square. <laughs> the first doors will open this spring, and as you heard, we have our first anchor office tenant, Partners Healthcare. <laughs> Bringing 4,500 jobs to our community, that's on top of the first 300 jobs arriving this spring as our first tenants open, and that's just the beginning. You sent a message. We want our neighborhoods connected by more than cars. Our streets are not rush hour pipelines. You want a happy, healthy, productive community that is walkable, bikeable, transit oriented, and accessible. We're now a civil level bicycle friendly community in the seventh most walkable city in the United States. We've dedicated ourselves to making this city accessible to all. And we are well on our way to becoming the most walkable, bikeable, transit-oriented community in the nation. And the community path extension is underway. And I, I promise you tonight, it will go all the way to Boston. You, you, value, you value our innovators and artists, the creativity that helps form our city's unique DNA. So we celebrate them and we invest in them. And as a result, our innovation and creative economy is thriving. 72 new businesses have been created in the past three years alone in Somerville. You expect excellence in our schools. Our steady pursuit of that excellence is advancing how our students learn, and they are reaping the benefits, especially in the phenomenal improvement in student growth on the MCAS this past year, which puts some of them on par with some of the highest performing districts in the Commonwealth. And this community doesn't just pay lip service to the need for affordable housing 
open space and historic preservation. You voted overwhelmingly to support the Community Preservation Act to create more funds for these goals we value. Right. And the awards and recognition for all that you have done and we have done together have rolled in from All America City, which is the Academy Award for Cities, to Healthy Living Innovation, to the 100 Best Communities for Young People. We earned them. You earned them. Finally, you wanted to be sure the community could shape its own future. So we worked together to create an unprecedented 20-year comprehensive plan, Summer Vision. Some of us first ever that simply says, this is who we are, and boldly states, this is what we will be in the next 20 years. And what is most apparent and important to all of us is this. Our most valuable commodity lies not in what we own or what we construct, but in each other. It lies in the creativity, diversity, and passion of our residents. Now that has always been here, but what has changed is that while individuals and families had their own dreams then, today we also have a shared set of hopes of our city. We know the power of what we can accomplish by joining together. We raised our expectations. We raised our sense of commitment and pride in Somerville. Somerville is the place where dreams take root grow and blossom. Today, people talk about why they want to come here and about why they want to stay here. And it's still some of them. It's still filled with the same creativity and diversity we had when I was growing up. Then neighbors shared their prized tomatoes or freshly grown basil. Hey, today we call that urban agriculture. <laughs> <laughs> then you heard different languages from all over the world in my neighborhood. Today we use the terms and embrace the terms diversity and multiculturalism. Then kids played ball in the street, parents chatted on their porches, and people played music in their homes. Today, we're weaving that same social fabric through summer streets and porch fest, and in our squares, and our playgrounds. Even with all our accomplishments and hard won progress, we are special today for the same reason we were special generations ago, our people. Some of it doesn't belong to any one culture, age group, class, or ethnicity. And that's why we hold community discussions. That's why we engage everyone from longtime residents to our newest residents who immigrated here from countries around the world. I mean, we not only want to hear from you, but need to hear from all of you. We are all united here. We are united in aspiring for a better life for ourselves and our children. We are united in fighting for what we hold dear. We exchange our thoughts, ideas, and cultures, and we share our aspirations. That is what makes some of us special. That is our uniqueness, and that is our magic. That's what we hope to never lose, because that's how we have achieved so much over the past decade. That is the story of some of them. That's my story. That's your story. That's our story. But it is only the prologue. We face new challenges. Our aspirations have grown bolder. Our dreams are broader. And as the saying goes, the years are short. So let's never lose our sense of urgency. We know that when we work together on a common vision, that is the fuel that propels ordinary people toward extraordinary achievements. In the coming year, this is how we will continue to seize that momentum and what we will achieve together. We will protect those who have chosen some of them and helped shape some of them. That starts with affordability. And affordability starts with housing. Every family that wants a home in Somerville should be able to afford a home in Somerville. <laughs> but to make this happen, we must be bold. We must be innovative. We will create a new affordable housing program for working middle class families. 
we will not leave the middle class behind. We will continue to foster the collaborative environment that sparks innovation and the creative arts with more than words. We will create new fabrication and arts districts that will preserve artists and maker spaces and live work buildings. As our commercial tax base grows and new industries come to Somerville, we want Somerville jobs for Somerville residents. Once passed by the legislature, our job linkage proposal will enable a fee for development that will support job skills training and career development services. And we would do this, as we do this, with the local agency, which will be at our side, hired as a partner to make sure we promote first access to local jobs for some of our residents. And we will continue to invest in the people of this community. Write this down. We will increase our investment in education. We will increase our investment in arts, culture, and recreation. We will increase our investment in public health. These are our values. We will also increase our engagement through a community budgeting process so that when I submit a proposal to the Board of Aldermen, it will be our budget, reflective of what we want to accomplish. But not everything we value is measured in dollars. Our environment, in fact, is priceless. Around the world, cities, cities are taking the lead in setting the standard on sustainability. As we have done in so many other areas, some of it will lead the way here too. So, Let's advocate together for the city's retirement system to divest from fossil fuels. Let's work together and make curbside composting a reality. Let's revive Alderman Gewurz's proposal to rid our community of plastic bags and pass it. We, we have already made strides for our environment, and we will continue to make these strides. But we cannot tackle the challenge of climate change if we are not bold, and if we do not join together as a community to work toward a citywide goal. I'm calling on you tonight to make our citywide goal no less than to reduce our net carbon emissions to zero. Zero by 2050. Let, let's make this our longest range investment in our people. I mean, it's an investment in our children and in their children. They deserve no less. And in the coming year, we will also expand our openness and access to our openness and transparency. We will share more city data with the public. We will launch a new online dashboard where key data about some of it can be easily accessed by every member of the community. To become more accountable, we will expand our city's ethics ordinance so that some of it has the toughest ethics laws in Massachusetts. Those laws will apply to every elected official, myself, the board, the school committee. We'll ensure accountability and equal access to city government. Everyone should have the same opportunities, not based on who they know, but on the merits. This is the momentum. When I was at, at, out at Lake Placid, I saw a transcription on a plaque of Coach Herb Brooks's speech to the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team, and he told them this, great moments are born from great opportunity, and that's what you have here tonight. That's what you've earned here tonight. 
Somerville. These great opportunities are before us. You earned it. This is our moment. Ten years ago, we were a city with hopes and plans. Today, we are a community looking back proudly on our accomplishments. Tomorrow, we begin to seize the opportunities of the next ten years. And I still see a city filled with hardworking, optimistic, and creative people. I still see the potential in every person I meet, the people who talk to me on the playgrounds and parks, who tell me about their own aspirations. We still have something uniquely ours. And you know, I consider myself a really lucky guy. I have a beautiful wife and wonderful family that I look forward to seeing every day. And a job that I look forward to every day because I know the strength, the creativity, and the resiliency of this community and what we are all capable of accomplishing together. That's the Somerville story. That's what makes Somerville unique. It's that magic, and I'm lucky to be part of it. And And, and the work continues. As I did 10 years ago, I call upon each of you here tonight and everyone in our community to join together to ensure a vital, prosperous future for ourselves and our children. Thank you for the last incredibly meaningful, rewarding, and fun 10 years of my life. And thank you for the promise of an even brighter future for our city. I wish for all of us peace and progress in the upcoming year. Thank you very much. I don't say this lightly, but we are blessed, blessed as a city to have such a wonderful mayor, to have a wonderful board of aldermen, and to have a wonderful school committee. I invite you to take some of the hope that you found here, some of the light, some of the sense of community and vision present here tonight. May we not simply tuck it away but may we instead share it with our neighbors and friends. May we be blessed as we work to make Somerville a city where all people can find welcome, opportunity, education, and a sense of community. Amen. I'd like to turn the proceedings over to Alderman White once more. What I would ask is the color guard please come forward to retire the colors and that everyone remain standing. <laughs> 